Children who need to be taught to respect traditional moral values are being taught that they have an inalienable right to be gay. Is it a stunt to protect children from such distorted propaganda? We didn't have homosexuals in working class families. They were puffs, weren't they? Attitudes to sexuality and gender have been transformed. But what about when it comes to children? Gay-themed books caused controversy until very recently, but in the world of teenage publishing, there's been a sudden change. Bisexual ice skating Nazi, I mean, that's just a sort of quite bonkers idea. My agent was just like, yeah, great. And, and publishers are really excited about that. Now, no young person would go into a library and hopefully not find themselves reflected in a novel empowering and it can make you feel like you're not alone. James Dawson gave up teaching to write. His latest novel for teens is about a girl who falls in love with both a guy and her best female friend. Imagine a colossal gothic pendulum swinging. It's published later this summer, one of a host of new young adult titles with LGBT themes now reaching the shelves. This has been a phenomenally positive time for the LGBT community, from gay marriage to the referendum in Ireland. It was obvious that these things were going to filter down, and now we're seeing them appear on shelves. Did you see Pride, the film? We did. There you go. So you are in the Pride shop, yeah. I didn't know that. I think the difference is now that whereas once upon a time it was usually members of the LGBT community who were representing themselves in fiction, now we've maybe moved into the mainstream, and actually there are plenty of now straight writers also trying to represent the LGBT community. <laughs> I rolled forward, and without deciding or meaning to, I kissed her on the mouth. It just felt like the most obvious thing to do. Clementine laughed. It bubbled out beneath my lips. She put a hand to my head and shoved me away. It was a playful move, but there I was, feeling devastated all over again. Julie Mayhew's also written a book with an LGBT character at its heart. Out this summer, The Big Lie is set in a contemporary Nazi Britain. I didn't sit down and go, right, I'm going to write a bisexual or lesbian character. It's just the way she evolved. And I suppose I could kind of say to myself, do I have permission to write that because I'm a straight, married mother of two? What, what right do I have to write that character? But then, then you'll have to say, well, men can't write women and women can't write men. And also you're saying, well, the experiences of uh, that young girl falling in love with her female friend is completely different to the way other people fall in love. And I, I just don't think that's true. When you were growing up, were there any books like these that reflected what you were feeling about relationships and sex? There was nothing. I grew up in a small village in West Yorkshire reading Doctor Who paperbacks and Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys and Point Horrors. And there were, in my mind, no representations of LGB characters in books aimed at young people. America has led the way. 94 LGBT young adult novels were published there in 2013, just eight in the UK, but that number is on the up. Parliament Hill School for Girls in North London has a Stonewall Society, championing LGBT issues amongst students, straight and not. I wanted to know if pupils thought there'd be a taboo around a book with gay in its title. First of all, it'll be quite hard for them to get some courage to take a book like this out of the library, because definitely, like, what other people would say about it. What do you think they would say? Well, they'd assume that person was gay. They would probably give them quite a hard time about it. I read quite a lot, so I've found that they have been adding more characters that are LGBT. They often just use either gay, lesbian or bisexual. They don't ever use like other sexualities such as pansexual, demisexual and asexual, which a lot of people don't know about. Um, I think that's a great achievement because it kind of brings awareness to the fact that there is more than one sexuality other than being straight or more than one gender. It makes you feel like you're less alone. Like, my myself, like, before I like started going to Stonewall and stuff, like, 
I thought I might have been like one of the only people who felt the way I did. What would you say to people who said that actually yeah, everyone's quite young to be having these kind of conversations? The majority of people say that are adults and you wouldn't say it's weird for us to talk about racism. So why is it different when we talk about the LGBT community? Because it's pretty much the same thing. Like, it's normalising it in society. And I think it's best to start from younger age because that's when you're most likely going to be influenced by it. For those of you who are not straight, do you think it helps to read books like this? Yeah. It's kind of like empowering because you feel like you're being noticed now and it's lot it's not just a minority. It's interesting. She tried to publish this ten years ago and the publisher rejected it because they didn't want her to write a lesbian story. This is a real golden time for LGBTYA, but it's really important that publishers don't treat it like a trend. It's not a flash in the pan, we're not vampires, we're not dystopias. Even if these books aren't massive, massive bestsellers, I think it's really important that we continue to represent LGBT characters in years to come, not just while we're having a day in the sun in the media. Young adult literature is leading the way, making LGBT characters normal. That's not happening as clearly in the world of adult fiction. Perhaps the battle will only really be won when a best-selling adult novel features a detective who just happens to be gay.